Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video today. We'll be talking about important ancient wisdom which can completely shift our lives or at least shift our perception which can help us to shift our lives. So what is the wisdom which is coming from many different indigenous tribes which could remind us of the importance of our lives, importance of our existence and the importance of the connection with nature and the power that we all possess within, that we all have within, the power which could help us to, to manifest greater opportunities, greater results, to, to experience more, more joy in our lives, more passion, more inspiration more love, more abundance. So what is the ancient wisdom which can connect us back with who we truly are so we can fully live our lives more purposefully and more meaningfully? So the first one which is truly important to me is that understanding that it all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you. It's a principle for many shamans. When shamans are teaching people how to use their minds, it's a basic principle. It all begins and ends in your mind. So rather than focusing on the results of your life, like how your life is going, become more self-aware to recognize the roots of the problems you're experiencing. And you may find out that, well, everything starts in certain beliefs I'm carrying on. Everything starts in my perception I have about life. Everything starts in my self-image, right? And you may find out that when you give power to a certain way of how you look your life, that perception starts controlling you right? That perception now has power over you. So in order to change that, you need to become again in control of your mind so you can shift your perception, so you can become more self-aware to recognize what you need to let go of and what is the knowledge that you need to learn more about so you could live your life more purposefully, more, more fulfillingly. It's a great time that we start educating ourselves about how to treat Mother Nature with healthier intentions, how to treat each other with healthier and more loving, more compassionate intentions, and how to be better humans. Like, what are the aspects of our lives we could improve? And, you know, when we start educating ourselves about it, we recognize that there's many different paths we could choose but we usually choose the ones which are the easiest for us or for which we have the least resistance to make them and those are the habitual patterns so to break an old habit and design a new one requires a certain amount of energy right a certain amount of awareness of consciousness a certain amount of focus so we need to build a certain discipline so we can recognize, well, I truly need to let go of the unhealthy habits in my life so I can develop the healthier ones. If this can help you in your life, I'm happy for that. I've made many videos which can explain more about how to go through that process, especially the recent videos were really focused on letting go of the old, creating the new, so you can rewrite a new story for yourself. The second ancient wisdom which will move you is that the color of your skin is less important than the spirit which moves it. Right? Because we can experience a lot of discrimination, we can experience a lot of, of duality, a lot of separation. We can experience a lot of polarity because of different beliefs in different groups. But remember, there's a Native American quote which says, people may hate you for being different and not living by society standards, 
But deep down, they wish they had the courage to do the same. So rather than caring what people may think about you, take care of your spirit and make sure that you are projecting the energy to the world that you wish to see on the world. Don't focus on the head because there's already too much of it. Remember where, what, what you give power to has power over you. When you give power to love, love will be guiding you. So the color of your skin is less important than the spirit which moves it. They always understood that maybe on the outlook we, we all look different and we have different needs, we have different desires, we want to do different things in life, but deep inside we are all the same spirit. We are all the extension of the same spirit which is urging to experience life in all possible different ways. So acceptance of the difference is a great beauty. The third ancient wisdom. We are deeply connected to the people we have relationship with and some of the people we meet at turning points in our lives. Which means that everyone who is consistently present in your life, you have a deep bond with that person. It may be on a soul level, it may be on a karmic level, whatever it is. Do not complain because of people in your life. Rather ask yourself what can you learn from those people and how to forgive to those who hurt you. This is the most important understanding we can gain in our lives because once we start learning from people which are present in our lives and once we start forgiving, we start walking more freely. We actually let go of the chains which are, which are holding us to the past and we experience a greater level of compassion and compassion is the force which is connecting all of us. Some people may say, well, it's hard to forgive that that person was really mean to me. Well, you're forgiving for yourself, right? You're freeing yourself by forgiving to that person. Even if that's just your internal work, even if you will not talk with that person, even though it's much greater if you, if you tap into your inner courage and talk with a person with whom you have maybe a, a tension in between. Forgiveness is a great power, so pay attention to that. And people which we meet at our turning points in our lives, it's so interesting because I remember when I went through my biggest turning points in my life, I met a few truly special people, which with whom we are now really, really good, really honest friends. And it happened all at the same time almost. Like, you know, when we are going through turning points, we meet people which we may perceive them as our spirit guides, as people which like we just need their knowledge or we need their understanding or we need their wisdom to guide us at some specific moments. So I call those people like manifestations of our spirit guides because it happens exactly that way. It's the guidance that we need at the hardest moments or the most challenging moments or the most unfamiliar, unknown moments in our lives. So remember that people you are meeting at your turning points, those are people with whom you have a deep soul connection with them. And you may feel it. The fourth ancient wisdom. Our job is to make the physical realm more spiritual. Have you noticed that? So many people right now are waking up to a spiritual awareness of life. This is the point of life where we start asking the question, are we truly happy with doing what we are doing? Is happiness truly what we've been um, taught to in the society, in mainstream news, in mainstream um, movies and TV shows and music and, and so on? Or is happiness coming actually from our inner peace? 
is happiness coming from our internal harmony, which is obviously our responsibility. That's where people start or people step onto a path of a spiritual awakening because we start searching for answers. And as Da Vinci said, a solution comes to us not when we are focused on finding the right answers, but when we ask the right question. Right? Every time we ask the right questions, we will receive the right answer. So we need to learn to ask deeper questions. And journaling can help you because journaling will help you firstly to understand more of yourself. For example, you take a piece of paper and you start writing down what you're thinking right now. Those may be simple thoughts, simple thoughts and stories that may happen today. But at some point you will start going deeper. You will start wondering why my life is the way it is. What I'm complaining most of the time. What I'm procrastinating on. Why I'm procrastinating on these things. Why I feel stuck. Why I feel lazy and, and so on. And suddenly you will see deeper questions will start popping up. And that's how we start digging deeper into ourselves. And that's where we start actually peeling off the layers of false perceptions, false identity, false beliefs about ourselves. And we recognize our whole lives we've been living in those false stories. Let's find out what will happen if I start living from the truth, from what I feel that is the right thing to do. Let's see. Let's start living our lives more out of curiosity for the unknown, for, for a greater understanding of who we truly are, and less from the limited beliefs and stories of what we've been told that we are. Always remember that. The fifth ancient wisdom. We are learning to live through intuition and to have faith that is leading us to the next point on our path. Right? You may recognize that to a certain degree we can do the things that people tell us to do. But at some point we start sensing that there's something we want to do more than anything else. Right? We sense like we want to travel, we sense like we want to express our creativity, we sense like we want to help others, we sense we want to write that book, we sense like we want to express ourselves more often. And those are the things which are usually against our deepest fears, against our beliefs we've adopted from society. But we're wondering like from where it is coming from. And soon we can realize, oh, that's intuition. Oh, that's that uh, inner compass, which is kind of showing us direction into the path which we are the most afraid of, but at the same time we feel the most drawn to. Do you feel that? This is actually... It usually happens once we start asking deeper questions, as I said before. It usually happens once we start researching more of what we actually want to do with our lives. We may recognize, well, I've tried so many things, but nothing truly provided me the joy that I know that is meant for me. Nothing truly provided me a sense of satisfaction or a sense of fulfillment that I know that is meant for me. And I'm not fully living to my greatest potentials, I know that there's something more within me. And if that is you, remember there is an intuition which will give you faith that will leave you to the next point of your path. So trust that inner guidance. Even though sometimes here and there we lose the connection and we lose the faith and we lose that uh, internal strength and bravery and we fall back into the old roots, we fall back into the old habits. But as long as we are aware of that, of that um, understanding why we've started a different path, as long as we know why we've started, we'll always find a way to get back on track. 
remember that it's all okay. It's all okay if you fall off. You're a human. You're not like a robot who would constantly um, need to to be aligned, need to be on on that great track of purpose. Whatever happens, happens for a reason. And as I've shared in the previous video, the challenges are actually building us. The challenges are making us. The challenges are providing us opportunities so we can build that internal strength. So we can learn to overcome anything that happens on that way. The sixth ancient wisdom is that after leaving the body at death, we will review every episode of our lives. We will clearly be able to see and feel how much love we are able to give to others in every encounter. So, this is truly important wisdom from our ancient ancestors because they understood that what truly matters in our lives is how much love we are able to share with others. And that's from where also the idea of karma is coming from. If you're the person which is constantly hurting others, you will come back to fix the old deeds. You will come back to improve the toxic patterns. Not because life is punishing you, but so you would learn to, to become more loving and more compassionate. So, after leaving our bodies at death, we will review every episode of our lives. So, it's, sometimes it's hard to understand that for many people on that um, conscious level. But deep inside we all know that life is much more than what we experience on, on a daily basis. And we also all know that we all want to experience more love. And, and the greatest feeling is when we share love, right? So the question is why we are not doing it more often? Why we don't, this, why, why we don't decide to open our hearts and, and be more loving? And of course, the answers may pop, well, we've closed our hearts because we are afraid of being hurt. In the past, we've opened our heart and we've been hurt and now we are protecting ourselves. And society is built on, on those beliefs. That's actually a defense mechanism from our ancestors. Because love was something, um, something quite unknown. Love is a weird force, right? It, it makes us vulnerable. It makes us honest. It open, opens ourselves. So most people are afraid to, to spread their love because they don't want to, to, um, they don't want to, to be like uh, weak people in the eyes of the society. But the truth is that expressing your love is an act of bravery, especially in the modern society where everybody wants to, to please everybody and everybody wants to experience a, a certain amount of acceptance from people around them. An act of love is an act of bravery, so never be afraid to open your heart and spread some love. My friends, never be afraid of that. The seventh ancient wisdom. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. All things are connected like the blood that unites us all. Man did not wave the wave of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. This is coming from Native Americans. And this is so important to understand, especially this last sentence. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. We need to understand that every time, every time, 
we treat somebody in unhealthy way it just shows how we are treating ourselves every time we do something it affects firstly ourselves and then people around us so when i see the situation on the world right now is a pure manifestation of how we were treating ourselves once we start taking more care in a healthier way for ourselves our life starts changing we start living lives by the examples of being better human humans and because of that our environment starts changing the energy we are projecting becomes different higher more vibrant uh, more magnetic so we start it seems like we start attracting more beautiful results into our lives and obviously the act of kindness the act of love the act of greater care is contagious more and more people see the opportunity in your examples that it's possible so more people start opening their hearts that's why it's so important to share love with others and once we understand what many indigenous tribes understood before us is that everything is connected so however you treat yourself you're treating others and however you're treating others you're treating yourself think about what kind of um, relationship you have with mother nature what kind of relationship you have with the person you perceive in the reflection in the mirror what kind of relationship you have with yourself when you're alone and ask yourself is this, is this the greatest version of yourself you could be and see how much space there is for improvement in your daily thoughts in your beliefs in your perception in your actions in your habits and you will maybe experience some unpleasant emotions which will come to the surface and that's actually a process of healing every time unpleasant emotions come to the surface they are calling you hey take care of me pay attention to me so this is the time where you need to sit down with yourself for yourself and acknowledge what you feel emotions are there to feel them not to ignore them that's the process of healing eventually you will learn that you you did a truly truly incredible do- job not just for yourself you've healed your dna you've healed your ancestral traumas your pain from the past and that's where forgiveness will be much easier because you will recognize that the healing you're doing for yourself you're doing it for others for people around you for your family your friends future generations so you may recognize that our emotional healing is actually a sacred process which is um helping all of us to make this world a better place for the future generations so this is just a part of the ancient wisdom which to me is really important and every single day i want to remind myself about this principles so i hope it can inspire you to look your life more deeply and more purposefully cuz you may find out that your presence really matters and the potentials which are for you maybe still unrevealed are are waiting you to find them so never stop seeking them never stop digging deeper into yourself because as i mentioned before we are all connected and once you tap deeper into a a one great potential of yourself you will inspire somebody to do the same and you will find more potentials and more potentials and that's how people get inspired to to tap deeper and to recognize their potentials we never know where this process can take us but if we look on life from a more loving and more compassionate way 
we may create something truly wonderful. So, my friends, this is it for today. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings, and power. Have a beautiful day, and till next time, one love.